Hello, and welcome to SciShow Talk Show, that day here on SciShow where we talk to interesting people about interesting things. Today, we have André from the University of Montana and Paulette from Meadowlark Science, Science and Education. I did it right. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, and Meadowlark is developing a game, I think, in concert with the university. Right. So first, tell, tell us uh, what you do at the university. I'm the director of the Center for Environmental Health Sciences. And, uh, and you are working with Meadowlark? Correct. Okay. And Meadowlark, uh, where, did, where did this come from and what do you do? About uh, in 2012, when in concert with uh, Dr. Holian from the Center for Environmental Health Sciences, we determined that we needed a game, a video game, and um, in order to be able to apply for funding if in the uh, federal government, you need a small business. Mm. So the small business kind of flourished out of that okay. in that uh, we're the marketing side of the game. So you determined that you needed a game. Right. That is an interesting way of, say <laughs> of saying we wanted to develop a game. What, how did you determine this need? There have been a number of studies that have shown that there's going to be an increased need for students educated in uh, STEM careers and in science careers in particular. Mm -hmm. In addition, there have been a number of studies that have shown that, that the age group that's most important to target are middle school students. So uh, there's a lot of things that are developed right now for elementary and even preschool. Mm -hmm. uh, once students get to high school, they've kind of already pretty well predetermined what their interests are. And of course, in, when they get to college, they're, they oftentimes have their majors already figured out. So middle school is a great age to target uh, increasing an in interest. So that's why we, that's the age group that we're working with. Uh, how do you go from um, knowing that you need a game developed that like, that will ideally increase an interest in students, um, an interest in, in science and, and engineering and math? How do you move uh, forward from there to actually determine what that game's going to be? Like, it's interesting to start to start a game with the goal of like what what you're going to do to the person while they're playing, rather than just have it be like, well, I want someone to have a good time while they're playing. And in addition to having a good time, you want them to you know get excited about you know the majesty of science, which I'm in favor of. Um, how do you do that? How do you how do you uh, create a game with those two twin goals in mind? Well, you're absolutely right. It is really important to create a game that, that the students are going to enjoy playing, because if they don't enjoy playing it, then it's no better mm -hmm. than didactic learning, right? Yeah. So uh, our goal was to create something that the students would be able to relate to, something that was important uh, in their lives, uh, such as their home environment, mm -hmm. uh, potential environmental impacts that they could have in their home. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also health outcomes that they could also, that they hear about or that, that they know about. So, it, and it's an inquiry-based game. It's kind of like a CSI type of game right. in which they have to uh, find clues and figure out the problem, and it's a problem-solving game. So what's the, uh, what's, the, what's the plot of the game? The, uh, this first game uh, has to do with carbon monoxide poisoning, so the students have to uh, find the clues as to why uh, our character here in the game, Mrs. Worth, uh, passed out and had to be taken to emergency room. So they have to identify uh, a number of potential clues, causes for, for why this occurred. Then they have to uh, investigate what, what type of effects these different agents may have and identify which one most closely simulates the, her symptoms. Then they go in there and they, dis and they have to uh, measure whatever contaminants are in the home. And so we give them uh, access to equipment in the video game mm -hmm. to uh, be able to go in there and measure uh, potential contaminants. And then they discover that the carbon monoxide levels in her blood are high. So that tells them that it must be carbon monoxide. So they also learn about respiration and, why, and mm -hmm. why oxygen delivery is important, how that occurs, and why carbon monoxide is hazardous to health. Mm -hmm. So they, they get to explore uh, different clues. They get to explore using uh, pieces of equipment. They look at graphs 
from the results. They have to interpret those graphs. Mm -hmm. So there's math involved, the engineering is involved, and technology with the equipment utilization. Mm -hmm. uh, so they get, they get to uh, cover all the STEM uh, information uh, and also relate to, uh, to uh, uh, reading material. Mm -hmm. We also prepare for using in the, in the teachers some information that the teachers right. use beforehand and then afterwards uh, to reinforce some of the information that they get out of the game. And the game is called The Mice of Riddle Place. So are the players mice? Yes, they are. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's not, like, it's not like little children trying to figure out why their mom's gone no. passed out, but it's, it, it's, the, uh, it's the good mice. The ones, they eat your cheese and then they, and then they make sure that you don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> in, this, in this first module, right. Okay. So I like the, it. <laughs> the, the, the housing for, all, for all, all these games is going to be a mice of riddle place, but in each episode that we'll create a different scenario. We're also looking at, uh, at asthma mm -hmm. uh, as, as a health effect, and here we'll be looking at what might be causing uh, uh, an asthmatic response. It's really a limitless opportunity to create uh, different learning scenarios. So how, uh, how big is the team that's been working on this? Uh, it takes a lot of, it takes a village yeah. to produce a game. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, we're very fortunate, that's where I think the university, uh, being, coming from the university environment has been very, very helpful here. So it takes uh, a science writer, uh, someone who really knows the science, make sure that science is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a physician on board uh, to make sure that all information is absolutely accurate. Uh, we have media arts people, uh, we have people from theater that are engaged in the uh, production of the game and the voiceovers of the, of the characters, uh, programmers, uh, and of, of course the various business teams. So it takes quite a few folks to be able to do this. It's, it's, it's a huge, huge effort mm -hmm. to produce something like this, uh, even though the final product may be only uh, uh, an hour game, mm -hmm. it takes quite a few months and a lot of folks involved to be able to produce this product. Yeah. So what's your, what's your timeline? Are you looking about ready to launch? Our first module is ready to go February 1. Great. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, and uh, for the future, we're looking at uh, trying to bring something on board at least once a year. Oh, so uh, keep keep adding and to the keep game. adding to the game. So uh, all of this will be able to grow within a middle school uh, curriculum. That's fantastic. Uh, the mice of Riddle Place is what to look out for. Uh, in in the meantime, Jesse from Animal Wonders is going to be bringing us uh, a guest, and uh, I don't I don't think it's a mouse. It's not no. a mouse. No, 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 no. But it might, it might eat mice, possibly. Oh, that, is, that is certainly possible. <laughs> I've, I've met a number of those. Uh, all right, everybody, Jesse is now going to appear uh, right, right there. <laughs> everybody, this is Bindi the Bearded Dragon. <laughs> Apparently, Bindi's mouth is dirty. Exactly. What have you been doing? What have you been getting your mouth in? Delicious into? banana. Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So Bindi, does Bindi eat mice? <laughs> she does eat mice. Then Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Find the clues on who ate all the mice. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Bindi the Bearded Dragon. Oh, Bindi the Bearded Dragon, she, um, she's a rescue like most of our animals, and she came to us um, very malnourished. Uh, she wasn't being fed enough and she didn't have the proper lights. These guys require UV light to get vitamin D and, or they, they need vitamin D and UV light to make their bones nice and strong. And she had none of it. So she's very lucky that she, all of her bones, we got her soon enough that all of her bones are, are fine. They're fine now. And she has yeah, does all not, the way she needs. Does not look well nourished <laughs> to me. No, she's doing great. She, she ate tons of food when she came in. And these guys are found in different environments. I know she's, She's saying she's not too pleased with you, Hank. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to open her mouth because that was awesome when she did it earlier. Yeah. Why? Why do you think they open her mouth? Well, or did she just stick her tongue out, or did she open? I didn't even see. She it. had a little, a little tongue poke. Oh, she just okay. Yeah. All right. She's just testing the air. But a, a full open mouth. Full would be open the mouth, a, and she could hiss at you too. Would be anger. Angry. And very, very discomfort. angry. And, and yeah. go away because I'm big and scary and I'll bite you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you. I don't know if you've noticed, she's gotten a little darker under her chin there. Oh yeah? A little color change happening? Yeah. 
So that's where they got their name from, the bearded dragon. The males will get darker than the females and um, they have some really neat things that they do if they encounter their same species in the wild. If they're big and tough and think that they are, their territory is being intruded upon, the males will turn dark beard and they'll do head bobs. Mm -hmm. It's a lizard thing. Yep. And then if it's a smaller male or a female and they want to be submissive, they'll do a little arm wave. And be like, hey, like, I'm no, cool. It's all right. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so the they have communication. That? So that you know that I'm, there I'm, you not, go. I'm cool. There Don't you worry go. about me. We're friends. Aww. See? That's not scary. She's like, no, I want to just get out of here. We brought a little bindi food. Do you think she's going to be interested in that? She might. She might be a little riled up by all the people looking at her, mm. but we can see. You can put some on the table. These are mealworms, and these are like little snacks for them. Well, meal snack. Yeah, yeah. Does that look like food or does everything look terrible? Everything looks terrible. Everything, no. <laughs> and now I'm on this, I'm just gonna lay on them. <laughs> <laughs> Saving them for later. What a big lizard. They can get 24 inches, so she could even get bigger. I mean, the males, the males can get bigger. Mm. She, she's about full grown right there. If you look closely, look at her ears. Can you big look old here? Big ear holes. But look inside the ear. Can you see, is in shadow? Uh, I see a membrane. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not just a hole all the way into their head. And, and some yeah. animals, like us, have just a hole. Just a hole. <laughs> but she has this membrane that covers it because she's down on the ground and she does like to burrow into places so mm -hmm. the dirt won't get in there. Yeah. So. Oh, God, they're running away. Escaping! Hey, wait, weren't there three? There were three, once upon a time. There were three. And now there are, now there are two. Some, someone's going to be really lucky. Did one of you guys <laughs> eat a mealworm? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you you have eaten a mealworm? I bet. Um, I've eaten a chocolate covered mealworm. Okay, you've never eaten a raw one. No. It's never too late. Do you late. want to try one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. I've eaten a cricket. That's as that's as that's as much insect as I've eaten. You eat like a real. You just ate it. Uh, it was cooked. I believe it was deep fried. Okay. Well, that's like that's not a fresh one. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 It was not alive. Which is... I don't, think I, could, I don't think I could eat squirmy food. I can't even eat jello. You can even eat jello? I cannot even oh, eat can't. jello. I was, you were like, I can even eat jello, but, but I couldn't I eat jello. Eat. I'm like, yeah, most people <laughs> can eat same. jello. Not the same. No, I can't eat wiggly food. Would you like to hold Bindi? Sure. I, she didn't seem to like me. Well, she can either go on your shoulder or she can go on your hand. Hand is fine. As long as, as, long as you think it's okay. Ooh, you're prickly. You're prickly. Ow, ow, stop. Don't scratch me. <laughs> Thank you for coming on my show. I know you don't like me, but I like you, so that's what matters. Uh, Jesse, thanks for bringing Bindi in. If you want to check out Jesse's YouTube channel, it's at youtube.com slash animalwondersmontana. It's wonderful, and uh, you get to see how Jesse takes care of all these animals and uh, how <laughs> what, a, what a pain in the butt your life is. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's remarkable. Paulette from Meadowlark Science and education. Thank you for, for joining us, uh, and Andrea as well from the university. Uh, looking forward to uh, having your game out in the world for middle school students everywhere to enjoy. It is, it is the, the mice of Riddle Place. Thanks for joining us here on SciShow, on the SciShow Talk Show. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. Hey, bye. Yeah, you're cute.